Joining us this morning at Post 9 in a first on CNBC interview is the former Department of Homeland Security Secretary, the co-founder and executive chairman of the Chertoff Group, Michael Chertoff. He's out with a new book sounding the alarm about this very issue. It's called Exploding Data, Reclaiming Our Cybersecurity in the Digital Age. It's Mr. Secretary, it's good to have you with us. Good to be good on. To see you. We've seen so many books come with scary theories about what could happen to the grid, uh, to air traffic. Uh, as uh, as data gets stolen or hacked. Is that what this book is about? Well, that's certainly part of what is in the book, but uh, the book is broader than that because as someone described it, data is now the new gold or the new oil. It is the most valuable thing we generate. And what I think people don't realize is how much data we do generate. You know, you understand if you sign up for social media, you're putting a certain amount of data on the internet. But you don't realize that what others say about you is also on the internet and also being housed and analyzed. And your locational data, what's, what's um, exhaust from your cell phone or what you buy at the store with your credit card, all of these things become combined to create a day-by-day -day picture of what you do. And that is a transformative issue for our society. And not something we can control or reverse or manage, really. Well, we can manage in a couple of ways. There are a couple of things we can do ourselves, and then I think there's some larger legal and social issues we have to deal with, whether in Congress or in the courts. For ourselves, we can be careful and mindful about what we sign up to share data about. Uh, a lot of times we reflexively give people our email address or give people information about where we live in order to participate in some online activity. And the reality is all of that, once it's out there, is not going to go away. So you've got to ask yourself, do I really need to do this? There are some things we can do to protect our security. Again, uh, when we buy something that's uh, wirelessly connected, one of these you know, refrigerators that are smart or baby cameras that are smart, we need to make sure that they've built security in because many companies don't. At a larger social level, I think we need to level the playing field <clears throat> between the individual and those organizations that are harvesting the data, and to start to give people control over the data even once it has been collected. We're seeing that in Europe, and even in this country, the U.S. Supreme Court has begun to make steps in the direction of giving people more control and more protection for their data. One of the biggest issues we've seen, and certainly played out in the 2016 election, is how that data then contributes to the weaponization of information. Yes. How do you get at that issue? Because it seems like it's just getting worse right now. Well, that's, that's really challenging. <clears throat> we have to separate out two things. Uh, one is when foreign governments, like the Russians, try to manipulate us by uh, playing around with our social media. Either they use artificial means to drive up searches, or they pretend to be your friend in order to pass on a story that's a negative story. And I think we can stop that. I think the platforms can stop that. The harder issue is, do you regulate the content? If someone puts out information that's distorted or exaggerated. And if it is an American, for example, they have the free speech, they have right yeah. of the First Amendment. So we have to start educating people about how to read these stories on the internet with a critical eye and ask yourself some questions about, do I trust the person who is conveying the information? Does the information make sense and fit with other things? And that's part of an educational process. I think we have to start actually in our schools and continue all the way up as we become adults. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.